Hello. Uh, hey, Adam. How you doing? Which Zafdig? How are you? What you up to? Oh, uh, I'm great. Uh, I'm just here with uh, Magister David Harris, and uh, we're chilling. Um, we have drinks in hand. Love um, yeah, the blood of virgins, clearly. <laughs> Magister and- Harris, I haven't talked to you in a while. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? We're getting ready to uh, we're gonna sit back, kick back, watch a little Carnival of Souls. Oh, uh, yeah. fant- fantastic film directed by uh, Herc Harvey with a really, really great organ score by Gene Moore. It's fantastic. The synopsis is there's a, there's a young woman. She gets into a car crash and she survives. Somehow is altered uh, by this. She moves to Utah. She's an organ player, very Utah. satanic instrument, yeah. and uh, then begins to see ghouls and ghosts. So um, the premise sounds quite fascinating. I'm going in as a virgin watcher. So it'll, this is all new to me. Love this movie. This is actually on the Church of Satan's uh, suggested film list, right? Uh, yeah, I believe it is. It's, um, it was actually one of the films that really inspired David Lynch and George Romero to get into filmmaking. Um, oh. And, of course, where, where would we be without either one of them? Seriously. Wow. Well, you are in for a treat with everyone else. Let's do this. Satanism demands study not worship. Movies are a large part of how our modern culture experiences stories and themes handed down for generations. Many movies have been labeled satanic, from evoking the word devil to their complex aesthetics or narrative. My name is Adam Campbell. I sat down with a friend or two to watch a so-called satanic movie. This is That Private Conversation Made Public. Welcome to Nine Cents Presents Satanists on Satanic Cinema. Really cinematic intro. Mm. <laughs> Super loud. <laughs> you want a drag? This just smacks of rape culture. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I don't see a lot of drag racing nowadays. I, that was like the yeah. thing in the day. Uh, well, no, no one of- wants to think- it all dolled up and put me in a dress when they go. Oh, not that kind of drag racing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to it's run real. in high heels. Is there any irony in that the worst drivers are the ones that are doing the most drag racing nowadays? Uh, the Asians. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually Fast and Furious 8 model. <laughs> it's a prequel. <laughs> it's Vin Diesel's grand. <laughs> yeah. I love the ribbing there on the bridge. Wow. Typical woman driver. It's okay because um, which is always right off the bridge. <laughs> I mean, do they still get the pink slip? Carnival of souls. It is a really, really great musical track. Sort of sets this eerie atmosphere. Yes, still very evocative of the time period. Mm. You don't get a lot of organ score. She ruined her nice weave in 2015. (laughs) That's true.
don't think I ever noticed that spider web there before. That's pretty cool. So, so what is this? This is a, it's a rock. Um, I, <laughs> I can't think it's tell. an elephant penis. I'm oh, not... right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause it's a carnival. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Quick, Quick friend, the rowboat out to pull that car out of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Just nice casually to... yank that in. Oh, look, Gandhi made an appearance. Oh, that's nice. To... <laughs> that guy is everywhere. This guy's describing it like he's completely stoned. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was like two cars. Uh... We were drag racing. Gandhi can't believe it. He's just shaking his head. He's... Oh, it's very bad. It's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> the poor young girls. <laughs> I got I to gotta throw my lure back in the water trying try to catch me a Model T. <laughs> you go for the Model T. I got the girls. They hook this one on like... the ankle. Really antiquated methods for like looking for a dead body. I don't know. I feel like there's more efficient ways to do that than randomly throwing a rope in the boat. <laughs> and Here's I the news media. I was going anywhere. I was running. Oh, she's on the elephant penis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are big. You can't walk on them. <laughs> Massive. Wow. Clearly, she's a size queen. <laughs> I do like that 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 look of this just disheveled, uh, completely torpor. I mean, we know this is mud and she's climbing up, but it is very, uh, uh, you know, night of the living dead ish looking. You yeah, know, like she's coming up covered in blood or gore. Or... Although her hair looks mostly dry, which, <laughs> which, <laughs> I mean, I suppose if she's some supernatural now, maybe that's what's happening. But and she does bear a striking resemblance to the woman that played Barbara in. Oh night yeah. Oh yeah. So again, what happened to the other girls? I ate their souls. <laughs> he's like, uh -huh. <laughs> After we're just like <laughs> what else? This is where it all happened. This is where my life changed forever. Now that's a <laughs> that's a legitimate trigger warning, I think. <laughs> <laughs> They're like just fighting this tiny current and losing. <laughs> I can't row faster. If only my car had airbags. <laughs> <laughs> you might still be alive. Please, Ford. So it occurs to me that she was the one that was sort of thought the whole drag race was a bit scornful by the expressions on their face. And she's the only survivor. <laughs> right. How yeah, I think you're right. It's that it's that old like horror movie thing. The virgin always survives and the, the slut always dies first. Yeah. Horrible bad girls get a bad rep, man. How do we how do we change that stigma in cinema? We need we need more sluts to survive. No kidding. And thrive. Yes. <laughs> Sluts night. Live to the end. Live to the end of the movie. <laughs> Should be night of the living sluts. Carnival of sluts. Carnival of sluts. <laughs> She's a slut. Of course she is. She is. Always a, she's always the quiet ones. Boys when they come home from the war. Look at that organ. <laughs> Why, thank Why, you. Why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I don't even know where to begin with that. I don't know why, but this particular piece of music is reminding me of the end of Dice Clay's The Day the Laughter Died. <laughs> Suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> People need to go listen to that album to get that joke. <laughs> yeah. 
she just walk into like an organ manufacturer and just start playing? He's like, oh, yeah. what's it going to take to get me to put you in this organ? <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> Very satisfying. Big organs are always satisfying. <laughs> Certainly are. <laughs> Not a lot of setup of the character development in this. No. No. Like, she died, she plays organ, she gets a job in Utah. <laughs> Well, really, what else is there? Yeah, I mean, true. <laughs> do we really want to know that much? <laughs> dun 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 dun. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she should have growled that. She's a strong, independent woman that doesn't need a church. <laughs> Just a big organ. <clears throat> That's my kind of lady. Again on this fucking bridge. I remember. You figured, figured she'd want to stay away from it. Yeah. <laughs> How did I survive? My virtue. Clearly the Lord was looking out for me. <laughs> Well, what or, people or don't know is a hymen is actually quite buoyant. So <laughs> because she's so virtuous, it saved her life. Uh, actually, I think, uh, it, I think she survived because she's a witch and witches float. Yeah, it's true. And very <laughs> small rocks. And Monty Python, <laughs> Holy Grail. <Yeah. laughs> Churches. Well, there is like a medieval parallel there when they were trying to test for witches. Like if she drowned, she was a witch and then good riddance. Oh, no, no, if she drowned, then she wasn't a witch. But then if she floated, then she was, and then they would kill her anyway. So <laughs> there was a... But at uh, least you'd know. It's just science, really. So you know, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> you know! So I'm wondering if there's a significance of Utah at all. I mean, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, actually, um, when uh, Herc Harvey was first... Uh, Driving through uh, Utah, he came across a Saltaire Pavilion, and that inspired this entire movie, just the way it looked um, on the Great Salt Lake. Okay. Sort of creepy and uh, old and run down. At least that's what they say. Now, I wonder, there, if we're, as we're watching this, if Adam's going to get any kind of PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> salt, salt buoyancy. <laughs> Mormons. <laughs> the... This does really remind me of the very beginning of uh, Psycho, the woman leaving town, just sort of running away. Yeah, he's very, very uh, Janet Lee. Even down to her look. Yeah. That was just the look in the day. Those dark haired ladies didn't have a chance. Which is after, you'd be screwed. I oh, know. Uh, but I'm chemically this way, so. <laughs> <laughs> My natural color is. A lot lighter. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Can I hit your ride? <laughs> <laughs> Slow down! <laughs> oh, it was just my face. Why is H.L. Mencken outside my car? <laughs> <laughs> Read my book. Yeah, it was her reflection. That's just how she looks with that makeup. <laughs> this is horrible lighting. <laughs> oh, the water again. And Another the car crash. Wow. She's just a really bad driver. <laughs> Worst luck ever. How long before the state just takes her license away? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> She's a danger to herself and others. I want to see another ghoul, like, running alongside her, just staring at her. <laughs> yeah, with his thumb can you, out. <laughs> can you please slow down? This is really exhausting. <laughs> that was it, the carnival. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so be grateful, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nah, nah, He's got nah, a real nah. date raper vibe. You're gonna get along with him. You mean old Mister Litman from the uh, <laughs> from the car- from the carnival? <laughs> got away with it if not for you meddling kids. <laughs> <laughs> Stay forever. <laughs> If there's anything else you need, don't bother me. Yeah, don't. don't. <laughs> Fucking room service in this hotel. I want to complain to the manager. That'll keep the ghouls out. <laughs> it's the old lady she's worried about. <laughs> like I said. She's, she's, yeah. <laughs> just to creep in and spoon in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> There's no room service, but there is bed service. <laughs> <laughs> Since old Ned died, I just need some warmth. <laughs> we have no food, but I can offer you the <laughs> the touch of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> the calloused, old, wrinkled hand of a woman. That's experience. Experience is worth a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, I really look terrible in a reflection. <laughs> I gotta work on my beauty makeup. I gotta stop using that lead-based f- foundation. <laughs> it was the before photo from an Oil of Olay commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a lost opportunity in this. I mean, he's he's not Mormon. He has to be, I don't know, Catholic or some other derivative. But the Mormons have their whole tabernacle and they're known for their organs. Like, it seems like it would... And they're in Utah. It would have been like a natural fit. I'm wondering if they sort of avoided that statement on Mormonism, though. Because at the time, this is what, 1960? Yeah, uh, 62. Mormonism in general hasn't been viewed as more or less mainstream until relatively recently. Like, they they, they didn't want to make that connection between cults, I guess, so much. Yeah. Plus, there's a universal understanding of, uh, you know, Catholic guilt and and fear of the shadows. Yeah. (laughs) I want you to try my organ (laughs) right now. (laughs) I heard you're skilled at it. (laughs) Limbo fingers and all. Work my organ. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, look at his face. He's into this. That's the worst blowjob face ever. (laughs) Because I'm like mellow and pleased. <laughs> Eyebrows were great. If you need me, I'll be in the back looking for an altar boy. <laughs> Keep playing loudly; they tend to scream. You just don't do it for me, honey. <laughs> this is all right. I'm used to working with bigger organs. <laughs> <laughs> Look, ma. Well, not Catholic if that's his wife. Yeah, that's true. Presbyterian or something? That's just like mom. That can't be his wife. Anglican. Anglicans would do. He might like the older ladies. Right. <laughs> well, the amount of Catholic priests that have wives is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> wives, quote unquote. <laughs> it summons them. So this is actually the director, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Her Carvey did play the the main ghoul as he was uh, billed. The main ghoul. (laughs) So it's interesting. The movie itself never calls him a ghoul. It's always in uh, sort of synopsis of the movie itself. And then Night of the Living Dead, they called him ghouls too. Like, at what point did the zombie ever actually take over? That's a good question. Like the word? Interesting. I don't know. Yeah. He's not safe. (laughs) (laughs) I have daddy issues. I wonder if the the zombie word comes from the the 
Hollywood interpretation of like Haitian voodoo, like as opposed to sort of the Catholic, you know, or whatever Christian notion of souls after the death. So zombie wasn't quite. Well, the, the weird thing about that is that I, I'm pretty. Didn't they? Didn't the term zombie start to come around like in, in the, like with Romero's later films, like you know, you know, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, like they started referring to them as zombies. I wasn't aware, at least cinematically, um, that the term zombie was associated with Haitian voodoo until I saw The Serpent and the Rainbow. Interesting. I don't know. No. I think that was 1990. Dang. I mean, there was like a white zombie movie, right? With, um, it, it was like a, a Indian, uh, I'm not, I'm sorry, an Islander culture that like turned people into zombies or something. I don't know if they called them zombies though. Okay. So because of modern technology, I just did look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> if only there was a way we could find out I know, like right now while we're talking on the commentary um, so the word uh, actually comes from uh, Haitian French, zombie, like a Haitian Creole so, so the word is indigenous to like Haitian folklore um, when it was used in film, I don't know Wikipedia doesn't tell me yet but <laughs> I do like that, she's like uh, could you take me in there? He's like, hell no no, 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 no no. dirty, dirty things happen there the police said no. Right, White Zombie was 1932, so yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you, for, you forget about White Zombie. It's, it, yeah. it, it, but that, that's another one. That's a real classic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're setting it up that Mr. Linden is mysterious. Is this? <laughs> she's almost trying to pimp her out to him. Yeah. <laughs> like she's going to get a cut. <laughs> like Mr. Linden's been in that room a long time and he, you know, he hasn't really known the company of a good woman in a long time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there and help him out. Do your womanly duty. Ah, oh, the good old days. When an old madame could make money off of a young, vulnerable woman. <laughs> hey, let me bring that back. Turning, so. turning out the young ladies. It's a lost art. Pimping ain't easy, even in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> Creep. So is this Mr. Linden? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you doing with your hand in front of her door? Cause it... <laughs> Creep. <laughs> I can smell you in there. <laughs> that was a long pause before the knock. <laughs> yeah, like, he, was you know? just, he was taking it in. Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> She's in the tub. <laughs> Young lady. <laughs> That's what I do with my mess. Mess in my house, also. Throw the <gasps> oh! It's a Mayan! <laughs> I like hey. to strangle cats at night. <laughs> yes, I just say. Something just screams like rapist <laughs> right there. Hey, I'm Mr. Linden. <laughs> I live next door. There's a hole in the wall to your bathroom from my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah this dude okay for for Ooh, those ankles oh yeah shake <laughs> for fans of of hate speech radio this cat looks exactly like evan weiss <laughs> exactly. got a visual people Maybe I could eat you. I mean, <laughs> taste you. I mean, take you out. Maybe. And by eat you, I mean cut you up in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> eat your body raw. That's what I mean. Keep you in the back of my trunk. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take <laughs> you to the mic. It's supposed to be in the river. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, wait, symbolism. Look, wait, he's putting his yeah. finger in the hole. Like, come on. <laughs> I'm I'm just, uh, I don't know about, about YouTube, but I'm triggered. <laughs> <laughs> Shoving the finger in the keyhole. Something that they couldn't say in 1960s. <laughs> this is what I want to do to you. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Wait, I think I will let you put your finger in my keyhole. <laughs> what mighty fine wallpaper this is. And this I really like the- Oh my god! It's the main ghoul! <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. And if you're wearing a skirt and no panties, you really shouldn't stand near the edge. <laughs> Shh, don't Stop. tell people that that's all I've got <laughs> people will always look up that shit yes <laughs> yes this is the proper form of self defense stand and clutch your clothes <laughs> oh then put on the lock yeah when trying to refuse a man's advances take a cowering <laughs> <laughs> bite your fingernails and say oh dear Plant your feet shoulder width apart, but be prepared to be swept off them. <laughs> let me in, let me in. You're acting quite queer, my dear. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> <laughs> Callous hands. Why did you refuse poor Mr. Linden? It's not like you have any other substantial offers for male companionship. <laughs> he pays quite well, you know. You've already proven you can't drive. You're going to need a man to take care of you. <laughs> sure, he smells like sardines and Budweiser, but you can get over it, my dear. <laughs> Us women have to tolerate so much these days. Worse than Mr. Linden. <laughs> Wait, do you have men hidden in corners? In every corner? Because... <laughs> Because, like, what do they what do they look like? I mean, are they nice? Or? <laughs> like, are they better looking than Mr. Linden? <laughs> Why did you lock me in? You're trying to fix me up with the only Jewish man in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think I am, anyway? I'm a fine German girl, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> I have standards. It's filled with a sedative. Yeah, eat the whole thing now. The whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> this one will. Well, la di da, Mrs. I am super powered against coffee's effects. Yeah, and yet here she is, staring awake, disassociating. That's how beauty queens sleep, because <laughs> you don't want to get wrinkles if you close your eyes. So you, just, you sort of lie motionless on your back with your eyes glaring out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was like my whole first of my marriage. <laughs> she just laid on her back with her eyes open. <laughs> Do your worst. <laughs> she has a really good sight. She can see all the way over there. Post-death vision is awesome. Like it just <laughs> fixes what a everything. Fact. Oh yeah, with the rolled up cuffs. Oh, so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, that was the look. <laughs> I know. You just gonna whip out a comb and like slowly yes. comb his greasy hair. 
I can hear you. I know you're there. I can smell you. I heard you breathing all night. <laughs> I, I was listening. <laughs> I have your room bugged. <laughs> I've been staring at you through the people for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> With your eyes open like that, I thought you were staring back. An we had a connection for like eight hours. <laughs> you probably thought I was trying to rape you, but I was only <laughs> trying to have sex with you against your will. <laughs> I can see how a, a, a stupid woman would come to that misunderstanding. Exactly. <laughs> Let me get you drunk now. <laughs> I mean, it's only 7 a.m. <laughs> We're right, already folks. an hour late. All right, folks. <laughs> Perhaps I'll teach you to play the skin flute. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> here, here. Play some yeah. business. <laughs> Message. What? Organs? Or churches? <laughs> I had nightmares about your organ all night. <laughs> <laughs> it was circumcised. It was weird. <laughs> it was like a peeled banana. His hand is off the close. <laughs> to her Just reach to her out poop. and poke it like the keyhole. <laughs> You sure you don't want some more liquor, huh? huh? <laughs> <laughs> He's very suggestive with his fingers. Very. Look at them. <laughs> He's just looming. It's so creepy. I can smell the the mustard on your breath. I, they wanted me to do some of that fancy book learning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a simple man. My coffee and the Confederate flag. <laughs> None of that liberal <laughs> commie shit. I'm pretty sure it's ass. <laughs> ass is the principal product of Brazil. I'm pretty sure. Like the way you think, which is that dick. <laughs> I don't know any woman, not one, that would tolerate this dude for 10 seconds. Yeah. I might go through the conversation just so I could recount it later to other people. <laughs> you know, I'd be that kind of. I do like cool that little person. statement. What do you think? I'm an alcoholic. I only drink starting at seven. Yeah, and and try to push it on my friends, so I'm not drinking alone. I know one woman who would tolerate a guy like this. You can, <laughs> you can hear her on the something different portion of the nine. <laughs> What we didn't realize is this is a personal, intimate look into David Harris's home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> David models his entire look after this guy. <laughs> his hair is perfect, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> sure you do. I'd like to know what the right impression is. <laughs> Like I said, I just force women to have sex against their will. It's not raping. It's not raping. <laughs> I'm just stupid and sleazy and confused why women don't want to fuck me. She's kind of <laughs> into it, though. Look at that. Right, why is Norman Bates working in a dress shop? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's a woman. Suddenly he's Miss Beehive, nineteen sixty-three. <laughs> Would you like to go to the dressing room? Oh, honey, those pumps are not going to work with that dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try the ones I got on. They're elevens, but you know you'll get an idea. I'm a little embarrassed that when I'm speaking in a man's voice, I have to lower my own. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little messed up. 
Whoa. It was the Wayne's World. Doodly, doodly, doodly. Even when she's undressed, she looks like she's fully dressed. Yeah, they did not want to show a lick of skin back in the 60s. <laughs> Ironically, it just makes me want to lick her skin more. Good call. Uh, you guys may not know this, but that music plays in all women's dressing rooms. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. It's it's why start shopping is so depressing. <laughs> Have you guys Unless, ever done that? Try to get out of a small room, but you just forget to unlock the door or something like that, and you start freaking out on it. <laughs> a little bit. That is not a woman. <laughs> She's going to get her knife. I got to go take a shower quick. I have to check on mother. <laughs> I can't hear them speak. Is this what ugly girls feel like? <laughs> <laughs> I get into two car car accidents and suddenly I'm Claude Rains. <laughs> it's like I'm a brunette. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not used to this. Men aren't paying attention to me. What's happening? It's as if all my value as a human has suddenly disappeared. <laughs> Am I a colored? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a moment of self-awareness. I am. <laughs> it's the 60s, all right? It's okay. I'll walk past that construction site. Sir, surely they'll catcall me. <laughs> <laughs> How else would I know my self-worth? Yeah, because if you ever want to, like, test out, you go walking through a graveyard. Is that, <laughs> you want to know you're real. <laughs> that would be my instinct too. Oh, that's the first time she's heard something. How high is she in that shot? <laughs> <laughs> so she's going in and out of different realities. Is this what we're meant to understand? Yeah, this is like of... the first time she's sort of slipping. Yeah. More you organs in my know, face. <laughs> I wanted to sell you some insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I love how the stranger is like grasping her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, he's so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to let you go. Hysteria. Hysteria won't solve the problem. And try as a woman, office. slap. <laughs> I, this is a total setup. He hires this guy to walk next up, like just straight up to like strange women so he can run out, grab them and take them to his office. My office is right there. <laughs> we'll have to masturbate to orgasm there to calm her down. <laughs> <laughs> it's the totally safe to go hysteria. off with some random stranger. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I am a doctor. What's <laughs> <laughs> a brunette? <laughs> As if I was fat or old or... <laughs> Your wife would understand. I wasn't one of the beautiful people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You'll excuse my back, but I had to rub one out really quick. <laughs> I haven't shaved it in months. <laughs> Ugh. 
clearly you've done something to lead him on. <laughs> Were your ankles showing? He's getting all philosophical, and he's about to <laughs> drop the bomb that he's not even a psychologist or anything. <laughs> I do. <laughs> After all, I'm an organist. And a church is just a place of business, that's all. <laughs> oh, they were. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, they totally that, were. See how you were imagining that I was molesting you when really I was just <laughs> treating you. That was my treatment for your symptoms. <laughs> well, that's because your brain is much smaller. You're a woman. You don't know your own experiences? Let me tell you what they are. You needn't concern yourself with these hallucinations. You need to get back to the basics, like cooking and cleaning and finding a man. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always been independent? <laughs> Don't you want to be like everyone else? <laughs> Don't you want to conform to this bland, awful society we've created? <laughs> Misanthropy is a sign of the devil! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, so what was he? I'm a podiatrist. <laughs> 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 I can tell by looking at your feet that you are clearly disturbed and in need of mental health. <laughs> It is interesting because I, I genuinely do think the majority of society has that idea that if you are not like just constantly going along with everyone else, if you don't like being around or acting normal or being like your neighbor, then there's something wrong with you. Yeah. I kind of like it like that because it means that everyone else just leaves me the fuck alone. Yeah. <laughs> but even though this was uh what 65 years ago is that was mm. my math correct 55 years ago <laughs> um the idea that that you someone would be suspicious of not wanting to be around people and not having very many friends is still pretty relevant but it's somehow suspect yeah, what do you mean you don't like all people all the way. time yes you you you, say, you see memes like that all the time and the, the whole the the whole social justice movement is based in in trying to get the the bulk of society to conform to one way of thinking. It's it's just the yeah. same story, in a different package. It is really interesting. I mean, you know, the movie takes a sort of supernatural, uh, eerie twist on the idea that. She went through a traumatic experience and she's having a hard time adjusting back into regular life. And so immediately it must be that she is just crazy or hysterical or different in some way. Not that she just has maybe a little bit of PTSD and she's trying to cope. Yeah. <laughs> but then there are a lot of, um, I mean, there have been analyses of these types of movies that view the horror genre as analogies for things like PTSD and like mental disorders. Mm. Like, um, the entire, what was it? Being human sh television show. So the vampire that's always craving blood oh, yeah. was the sort of metaphor for heroin addiction. Really? And yeah. And then the, um, uh, the woman who was, who was a ghost stuck in the house that she died was a metaphor for a, uh, being, uh, what is it? Agoraphobia, phobia, like, Oh, not wanting public, to go yeah. outside, like just being terrified of being out in public. Well, and we, 
I forget what the metaphor for the werewolf was, but well, I think I think the horror genre really is is one of the few film genres that really can dictate a message within the context of, of, of a story, as opposed to just beating you over the head with it. Yeah, you know, it, and it's it, meant to. Yeah. yeah. You don't see, you don't see a lot of metaphor in film outside of of horror, especially. No, that's true. <laughs> I, I never really thought about that. Yeah, I mean, there's it, it's all on the nose: uh, intense drama, intense comedy, adventure action, even sci-fi. Like horror is the only one that I can think of that really has like depth to it. Well, because it's meant to provoke the primal fears. And some do it better than others. I always enjoyed the psychological thrillers way more than the gore stuff because I find the gore stuff kind of boring. Here's more blades and more blood. <laughs> like, it doesn't do much for me. Yeah, this movie does an amazing job with lighting and audio, just, just environmental sound, along with that really wonderful score of, of upsetting you. They got really intense camera angles like the one we're looking at now. It's it's really great for atmosphere. Special effects are minimal in this film, and yeah. I'm I'm a fan of that. I'm not I'm not a fan of of modern CGI. I think it it looks cheesy. Um, the fact that they're able to do this, we're able to do this in the '60s yeah. with virtually no special effects, all with lighting, all with camera angles. It's a brilliant film. I love that you can always hear her heels. It is interesting because there's there's zero setup on our character, but we are immediately connected with her because we're experiencing it all from her perspective. We're following her around in her experience. <laughs> that was it's the like that <laughs> scene from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> all the, <laughs> the dead people underwater. <laughs> that was actually the husband of the woman in the tub in The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> He's always been there. He's always there when I take a bath. <laughs> Utah does have really, really great uh, homes and architecture. Uh, architecture, 18th century type stuff. Rape you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really want to pick you up. You don't understand. I've been standing outside waiting for you. He's actually humping the banister. Yeah. <laughs> he's always like leaning and grasping on the furniture around. Like he's, he's trying to like seduce her via the inanimate objects. Mm -hmm. Look Just at how I caress this. <laughs> and I finger this knob. Oh, yeah. Grinding his dick on the post of the stairs. This could be your clitoris. I mean, it hurts, in, <laughs> but in a good way. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, don't mind me. It's got a splinter in my shaft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll go get the rupees. Well, hot diggity dog. <laughs> Getting some air okay. As she wears a modest scarf around her hair. <laughs> she, she's converted to Islam. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what she meant. Like, churches are just a business to me. <laughs> Islam is a way of life. Yes. <laughs> <Al -Akbar. laughs> my hands. What's happening with... My hands. I can't get this spot out. So when I'm feeling up a girl's tits, this is how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> but Madge, I soaked in it. What happened? Cast out, devils. <laughs> yes, get us out of this boring ass church. That roofie is finally kicking in. 
<laughs> Mr. Lipton is right outside the church. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the way she's playing. That's creepy. That is creepy. That's one for the foot fetishists. That's shocking, I say. Shocking. Bare feet. No arches. I give her a five. <laughs> she wouldn't make it in one of my films. Dun, dun, dun. So there's that that music behind the music that's very carnival sounding. Dun, dun, yeah. dun. It's alive. <laughs> I told you not to put so much chlorine in here. <coughs> well, maybe they've just all converted to Judaism. <laughs> They've all been saved. <laughs> They're rising out of the water to form a black metal band. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Those people slow the fuck down. They're going to get dizzy. <laughs> That's the way professionals do it. Her this is how I need the bed. <laughs> looked like it was as big as her. Middle finger. I, like her I, hands are all fucked up. I loved this episode of Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> edition. you dancing? Come with us. Come with us. Relax. What? What? You hired me for it. <laughs> Don't play that devil music here. <laughs> I think it was quite soulful. <laughs> Your lack of we thought we were hiring little Richard. In truth, I was hoping you would be a young man. <laughs> Why did they send me these women? <laughs> <laughs> you women and your vaginas. <laughs> Tempting the men with your calliope music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fired! Feel free to come back anytime. <laughs> I'm no longer going to provide you with an income, but feel free to stop by and put some money in the collection plate. <laughs> we can still pray together. Your money's still good here. <laughs> so when is she going to get out of there? I already hired the freaking priest of fire. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, everything about this guy is sleazy, man. <laughs> I took no, that three to hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's already tied one on. <laughs> Just cut him off. He has nothing important to say. <laughs> uh, I don't think she's that into you. Really, this is where calliope music leads. It leads to jazz music and. <laughs> I tell she's you, like. <laughs> I had a better time with the ghosts. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. How else can you be a douchebag than taking my drink? <laughs> <laughs> what a little sour puss. He has the 12-year-old boy approach to women, yeah. mocks them, and makes fun of them. He's doing everything short of pulling her hair. Watch you a drink? Why aren't you all over me? 
You'll take it and you'll <laughs> like it. <laughs> I would never date that guy. Oh, so there his maybe that's his real interest. <laughs> <laughs> Pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, did he just offer to be his wingman? I'll uh, put yeah, it he's over. Gonna, he's like, no, no, I don't want to know, and I know people like you. Yeah, that's the ticket. One night we were drinking and we got confused, see? (laughs) (laughs) Try not to make a big thing out of it. (laughs) I'm still into girls like you. With your ankles and your anuses, it's great. (laughs) Is that the epitome of (laughs) what that would be? Ankles and anuses is a chapter (laughs) in the biography, I think. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, it's the lost chapter of militant eroticism <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. actually it is alcohol is very, very quite big. literally <laughs> <laughs> just jump in there actually dude it actually is poison okay let me break it down for you the more you're, you're a dummy Uh, she, she said that without vomiting, so I'm I'm impressed. You do a little. I, I, <laughs> exactly. I want to know the I want to know the touch of a boost scented man who doesn't know how to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward and sloppy and way too quick. <laughs> I really want to work for a good half hour trying to get you hard. <laughs> God, I love jackhammer fucking. Oh. <laughs> It'd be the best do, huh? of your life. I'm the man for you. <laughs> I love inexperienced 15 year olds mm. he's like I'm gonna bite my thumb and it's gonna be sexy <laughs> hot diggity damn and you're gonna cry and it's gonna be sexy <laughs> <laughs> it like smelling her shadow <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think Herc Harvey has a scent fetish. <laughs> <laughs> awful lot of awful lot of close conversation in this film. It's like she's sad enough to be desperate. It's my night. <laughs> that her see her panties just got moist when he tripped down the stairs. <laughs> Clumsiness so is I all got my sexy. <laughs> He's so ready. He's just like, finally, days of work. <laughs> he is fucking worked up into a froth. <laughs> it's like fucking bu- bubbling out of him. He's <laughs> Come on, you see. You, you don't have to on. be alone. I can masturbate into you. <laughs> You lucky girl. You lucky, lucky girl. (laughs) Get off me. And that's enough for me. (laughs) You're all over me in the bar. I'll be done. You must like me a micro amount. Damn. <laughs> Although it'd be kind What's of hot if he suddenly got more appealing to her. Like, <laughs> I'm digging the new metal look, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, but when I look at you, I see my father. <laughs> He's like, all right, you know what? I'll have sex with a pig, but not a crazy woman. 
I have gotten out of dates in that same way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be left alone. Don't leave me. It works every time. I grasp at my pearls in the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Start rearranging furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you I going, mister? Where are you going? Here. <laughs> and that organ just adds to the fury of her mind. The frenzy. I'm blowing this popsicle sand. Clearly there's nothing left for me here. I blew the deal with Mr. Lipton. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't close him. <laughs> interested. Most guys are, most guys are really into that psycho bitch shit, but clearly. Hey, Lyndon's got standards, all right? <laughs> that guy's class all the way. None of that possessed girl stuff. <laughs> None of this Linda Blair shit. Well, aren't you Miss Nosy Noserton? Going to a little place called None of Your Goddamn Business. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you've heard of it. You bet not a shit on your sheets. I'm keeping the deposit. <laughs> No, no, it's vomit. It's green vomit on the sheet. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like all possessions. Green vomit and fucking Jesus. Getting in my car, <laughs> the only place that makes sense. If I crash over a bridge again, does that reverse the effect? <laughs> <laughs> There's a distinct squeakiness to a car. It runs on souls, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Fill her up with some dead, will you? This guy diagnoses the problem immediately. It's your transmission, lady. Bring it in. I'll take a look. <laughs> I'll take care of it. See? I don't know. I know you don't know nothing about cars. No. No, rapist. I know you. <laughs> I know you types. Your types like to break things. Charge me extra. And now doesn't the guy in the tire sign look an awful lot like the main ghoul? Mm. Dun, dun, mm -hmm. dun. He's always staring at her. It's always. Giving me the cross-eyed look, trying to sell me a Michelin. So right now I want her to ex exit the car and forget that she's raised. <laughs> <laughs> Make it real slapstick comedy suddenly. <laughs> and they have the sound effects like ba ba boing. <laughs> it's just three stitches. Oh, uh, yeah. That's not ominous at all. See, this, this was very Nightmare on Elm Street. She fell asleep for half a second, and then she's in the boiler room. Right. With that guy with the hairy palms again. <laughs> the main Don't rule. judge. Some of us have hairy palms. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Nothing at all. Just once in one of these horror movies, I want the female to like grab a knife and a shotgun and be like, back the fuck off, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, it's always like this, clutching at themselves, wide eyed. Uh, oh, wait, wasn't she raised? So she didn't fall out of the car? They didn't show that? <laughs> I'm disappointed. She fell out the door. I think that the ghoul lowered her. Just for her own safety. <laughs> I want to hunt you. I don't want to break your leg. <laughs> yeah. I'm dead, but I'm still a person. I still care. 
I'm a gentleman, see? <laughs> I'm a gentleman ghoul. Oh, there it is again. I say we do the super happy ending. <laughs> Damn it, I'm a brunette again. <laughs> All the times to not be able to use my womanly charms. <laughs> Sir, breasts, right here, look. So why she doesn't take advantage and like pop in some dressing rooms right now is beyond me. <laughs> that would be <laughs> my first stop. Yeah, the, I'm like it's... walking into like some guy's house and like... <laughs> 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 Some crush. I'll just like walk into his house and hang out in his bedroom for a while. <laughs> That's nice. What would you do if you were uh, invisible oh. there, David? Um, I I don't know if I can legally say. <laughs> <laughs> there, might, there might be some statute I'd be violating. <laughs> Perverted stuff, I would probably, you know, like steal some money somehow. But like the perverted stuff first, I think. Oh, no, it, it, it's it's immediately the perverted stuff first. Yeah, I just don't think I could resist. That's it's, what they're doing what? right now. <laughs> I, I have a friend. He's a he's he's a typical weird, not a weird, but just like a regular blue collar dude. But he lucid dreams all the time. Mm-hmm. And, Whenever, whenever he realizes he's lucid dreaming, he's like, the second I realize I'm awake in a dream, I start raping every girl I see. <laughs> God. God. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's like hilarious and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> like, I'm so afraid when men say shit like that. <laughs> he's like, because I know I can get away with it. <laughs> yeah. Like, fucking creep. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? I don't want to get on the magic bus. <laughs> I don't want to take a trip. You could tell they all wanted to sing Kumbaya. Calgon, take me away. <laughs> yeah, that was totally a, a shampoo commercial right there. Somehow a bus full, full of ghouls sounds like a good time to me. I don't know. <laughs> I'd hop on that bus and... What are we drinking? Who's making there is, I'm, there There's a, a, a really interesting line there in that the dead need to travel to go somewhere. They're just waiting on her to sort of get on their way. Right. <laughs> Jesus, is this bitch going to get on the bus? Like, we can't go to the carnival until you get your ass on the bus. We're late. So she can't hear anything, but we can still hear her heels. <laughs> <laughs> Running. And all we heard were the sounds of heels clicking against the pavement. <laughs> click, 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 click. I actually love that sound. Like when I'm wearing heels and I'm walking. It's a, it's a powerful sound. You it's get the sound of this. crushing men's testicles. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> I hate that sound now. <laughs> <laughs> Is she going back to the fountain? So it would kind of suck that if you were invisible and then you ended up going someplace perverted you weren't supposed to, and then suddenly <laughs> <laughs> they can see you again. Yeah. That, that could get you into some, some serious positions that you <laughs> might not want to be. I, I was, I, I was checking the prostate. That's all I was doing. I swear. That's all I was doing. <laughs> How did I is end up in the women's locker room? Is it the main ghoul? Is it the main ghoul? <laughs> of course it is. Ah! <laughs> oh, dream sequence? Oh, it's, it's a cop out. A Come on. <laughs> all a dream. That's the weird part right there. She was raised. 
Yeah, I was about to say, if she, like, just drives off the platform, (laughs) that would be funny. (laughs) Crashes again. It was nice of the mechanic to let her nap in the garage. (laughs) Carrie's... Making jokes about her snoring. She didn't pay me. (laughs) He's probably just as big of a creep as Lyndon. He's, like, sniffing her hair while she sleeps. (laughs) Nice exhaust pipes. <laughs> so much better than gas. It's a mighty fine right? chassis you have there, lady. <laughs> clink, clink. Coney it's Island cold, has seen man. better days. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like shit. This is That's what happens after though. there's been like a, a a rave of ghouls. Like the next day, they just wrecks your house. <laughs> it's just, just tore up. They just trash it. They have no respect. I can definitely see how it, he would drive past or even explore this set and be inspired. Like, I have to create a movie for this place. Yeah. Because it's so otherworldly in itself. The black and white really sells it. Mm-hmm. Like it. It adds to the desolation. The fact that you can't smell it is everything, because it stinks like hell up in there sometimes. Just taking a bath, you want to come in? <laughs> I think they reused those shots from the previous scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the exact same, like the exact same shot. We're on a budget here, folks. We're reusing footage. I'm not afraid this time. All right, where's Jack Nicholson trying to get a drink? <laughs> Words of wisdom, Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Maybe I got some avocado on your jacket. <laughs> I think it's my, I think that's my favorite scene in that movie. It's great. Great. There's an interloper. So, like, why don't dead girls know how to put on makeup properly? I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you can like breathe underwater and like make appearances and float in the air. <laughs> Who says that's not proper? It's really kind of doing it for me. Because <laughs> they all look like they've been like road hard and put away wet. <laughs> sure do. <laughs> there she is. Finally among my people. So looks right. like you could be oh. the Joker. <laughs> no. do one little carnival dance and everyone starts losing their minds. <laughs> Welcome home, Clarice. <laughs> See how happy you'll be? I hate the waltz. Why don't you know how to tango? Get, Get her! her! Let's do the time warp again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a jump to the left. <laughs> really fast for dead people. Hello. Let's, do. <laughs> Let's make out. <laughs> That she is biting the fingers again. Who has like, to stop and chew your fingernails when you're running? <laughs> <laughs> you, you would think you wouldn't have that kind of time. Tag, you're it. Tag, you're it. <laughs> <laughs> they all think they're just playing tag football or something. <laughs> or follow the leader.
And then all the men come to survey the situation. If I die in a supernatural experience, that's the guy I want investigating. <laughs> <laughs> I love that handprint, though. That's great. And then nothing. And then nothing. The I footprints knew lead to hell. No good. <laughs> George C. Scott is unimpressed with the investigation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she was lacking in moral fiber, so let's she get back, coffee. Is she, she back to the bridge she, she crashed over? She was playing that damn calliope music in the church. Clearly she was a harlot. <laughs> <laughs> that devil music. Back to the rowboat. We found the car. <gasps> I'm shocked. She is. Open your eyes. Hot dog, Cooter. It ain't <laughs> rape if they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> All right. That was fantastic. <laughs> All right. So can I ask uh, both of you? I'm going to start with you, Zaftig. Uh, why do you think this was added in with the uh, satanic film list? Uh, because assholes like us make fun of it? Or no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's a great amazing. film. Uh, I think that the film noir type of... Uh, well, this isn't quite film noir. Um, mm. uh, but The Shadows, guess, the, the cinematography, it, it is reminiscent of it. It is very noir-ish. It, it definitely, yes. it almost takes the noir style of filmmaking and applies it to horror. Yeah. Well, uh, to me, to me, a lot of the films on the the list, and I would, I would imagine that for me, well, for me anyway, this, any time that there's a film that sort of exposes your deep seated fears, this line between the living and the dead, and uh, and how they play with that, and and to me also the uh, notion of the evocative music, like somehow that it's associated with the devil and can bring the souls to her, uh, I found an interesting kind of like sub story. It, it was interesting because there were parts where she was she was almost summoning the dead, uh, like she was a bridge, yeah, you know, of sorts. Yeah, via worlds. the music. Yeah, interesting. So in the uh, the Secret Life of a Satanist by Blanche Barton, uh, there's a chapter called Hell on Reels, and um, it's written here: Carnival of Souls is another richly evocative film that has been completely lost until recently, and that was really a a big part of. Um, uh, something that, uh, that Anton LaVey really loved in uh, film is emotional resonance, is uh, drama through music or through uh, just the scene itself. So I think that plays a large part of it. Um, Magister Harris, do you think that there is, uh, well, for you, what was uh, the most s satanic element of the film? I'm going to go in a different direction. And I think the you, you see a lot of applications of lesser magic in this mm -hmm. film. Um, because think, think about the entire running commentary we just did and how many other films we referenced that came after this that we were reminded of as we watched this. Yeah, this yeah. film was influential for so many other filmmakers. Um, and that, to me, is the hallmark of a satanic film. It has longevity. It has immortality. Nice. That's a really, really good point. A, a lot of these films, you look back and see that, you know, someone has claimed it's satanic. And, you know, what does that even really mean? How can something be satanic and its, its elements, its, its longevity? I mean, looking forward to um, Night of the Living Dead, you can see how the, the camera angles and the lighting was uh, a direct callback to this particular film. Um, even the heroine aspect of it, you know, the, the, the female... Uh, trying to survive through the entire the entire film herself and and really you know making that commentary of um something that I don't think was very popular in the time that a woman could be uh, the center and the the strength or or at least the the running thread of a film 
You, you, you don't see a lot of that until, you know, the later years of cinema. I mean, you saw it a lot in independent films. Mm-hmm. One, one that immediately comes to mind, and it's not, I don't think the, the, the female p- protagonist, for lack of a better word, um, in, this, in the film I'm about to reference is really applicable because it's not really a heroic story. But the B film, Bad Girls Go to Hell. <laughs> uh, um, if, you, if you've never seen it, it's, it, it, it is this one woman, and it's, it's basically a day in her life uh, where she essentially you know, gets raped a bunch of times. But she's, <laughs> and that's the, that's the movie. It's, and it's, a, it's a really horrible misogynistic film from a woman's perspective. Because you just follow this woman throughout you know, the, the course of these events. She's attacked in the hallway of her building. And then she, she goes to try to find a, you know, the, a policeman. And as she's trying to find a policeman, some other guy attacks her and drags her into an alley. And it's just over and over again. But you're seeing it from her perspective. You only really saw that kind of thing in independent film in the 60s. You, didn't see, you don't see stronger female leads until, no. un, until I, I think, really, you, maybe you started to see it in the 80s. Yeah, but you don't even yeah. even now. There's a well. For, even now, even when you see female leads, they often they tend to be uh, parodies or stereotypes or tropes. Like they're meant to sort of represent certain things and move the story forward. It's extremely rare. I find that you find female characters in general that are actually complex, that have mixed emotions about things, that aren't sort of uh, you know very one or two dimensional types of characters. It's uh, it's it's not something that's common. You see it more television now. You see, like you, you watch, watch shows like you know The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones. Um, right. You see more complex female characters who are morally ambiguous, um, who you know will do the you know the quote unquote right thing in one situation and not in another because it happens to suit their needs at the time, which is what people do. Right. People yeah. do that you don't mm-hmm. see a lot of depictions of the way people really behave. There is there is no concrete. I'm a 100% good guy or I'm a 100% bad guy. That doesn't exist in the real world. It's all varying shades of gray. And yeah. you don't really, you still don't really see that in cinema. You see it more in television. Yeah, that's true. I wasn't even really introduced into that idea that, that you know, self-interest is what's good um, until I read the Satanic Bible as a young man. Everything in my culture in the society that I was raised in the small environment of, of Utah it was very much you know what's good is the Mormon church what bad what's bad is everything else and so you know reading the satanic bible the first time and, and getting that grasp on wow it, it is a varying shades of gray in life and everyone's version is so dramatically different it, it really does open your eyes it did it for me anyway well um Thank you both so much. That was a fantastic film. Uh, I, again, it was one that I hadn't seen in a very, very long time, but I do truly enjoy it. And it was really great seeing it and, and commenting, having a lot of fun with uh, you two watching it as well. Um, let me drop a little note here for those who would like to uh, hear a little bit more, learn a little bit more about Witch Zaftig, tune into Unorthodoxy with Witch Zaftig. She's on Facebook and uh, she's on the web, so you can just search it up. She's got a wonderful blog. And Master David Harris has uh, Satanism Today and uh, is working on releasing Vagina Time, uh, uh, independent film. So uh, look forward to those projects online. Uh, it was again really wonderful with both of you. Uh, thank you so much, and we got to do this again. We got to watch another, another movie sometime. Anytime. Yes. That was yes. great. I enjoyed this. Hell yeah. Well, until we can do it again, hail Satan. Hail Satan.